More now on the federal takeover of Silicon Valley Bank. Carl Bonham heads you hero of the UH Economic Research Organization. We've been assured by the Hawaii Bankers Association that this is a different situation from local banking, which should be fine. I thought it would be uh, helpful to have you explain why it is sort of an apples and oranges situation. You know, it, you really couldn't come up with an example of a bank that's more different than sort of the typical regional bank like we have here, here in Hawaii, or even the large banks nationally. Uh, this bank was extremely specialized uh, with the vast majority of their depositors coming from this high risk uh, venture capital. These are portfolio companies that are invested in by venture capitalists, and those companies grew dramatically during the pandemic. And the bank grew dramatically. It doubled in size during the pandemic. And then, of course, starting last year, the stock market really began falling, and it was tech-centered. So these companies are losing money. They can't raise additional capital. They're pulling their deposits. They're burning through their deposits, right? They're spending them to stay afloat. And so the bank is losing depositors. There, there aren't other banks uh, outside of cryptocurrency, right, which isn't, isn't a characteristic of, of local banks, that they would be uh, that narrowly focused. And so when you start losing liquidity, you have to sell assets and they're selling assets that have gone down in value. Let's talk about local banks because, as you say, they, they play the game very, very differently. Local banks, uh, Banco First Hawaiian, Territorial, Central Pacific American Savings, one of the things they do that's kind of interesting is they like to take a piece of loans on the mainland to diversify geographically. Well, they diversify in multiple directions, right? Geographically, uh, we were talking. I was talking about the the very narrow focus of, of Silicon Bank in that all their depositors are basically from the same area. In local banks, they're taking deposits from consumers, from businesses, from government, and even geographic diversification. And then on their on their portfolio, their their assets. Um, they're invested in real estate loans, they're invested in consumer loans, they have credit card lines of business. And if, you, if you look at Silicon Bank, over 60% of their assets were these, were these long dated securities. And I mean, this is a typical problem for banks. You have to manage, to, you borrow short and you lend long, but you've got to manage both of these, liquidity side and asset side. And really Silicon Bank is an example of a management failure. Now, we haven't mentioned the FDIC yet, and the FDIC is a federal agency that guarantees deposits up to a cap. And if you have a dollar more than that, it's not protected by the FDIC. But what I'm reading this morning is that the, the Fed and the Treasury are talking about maybe extending that so that everybody gets made whole no matter what. So that's actually, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that's another way in which Silicon Bank was dramatically different from Hawaii's banks and typical regional banks. Only about 10% of their depositors were insured. In a regional bank, in Hawaii specifically, well over 50% of depositors are insured. And so what that means is that as soon as it became clear that Silicon Bank was having some problems, all those depositors said, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my money. And in fact, some of the venture capitalists were telling them, take your money out. So basically, people started pulling money out. In Hawaii banks, were almost the typical person in Hawaii who has deposits in a local bank or a, a mainland bank is insured. And they're going to get their money regardless of what happens to, to the banking system. What the Fed and the FDIC have announced and the Treasury have announced is that they're going to protect depositors. The people who are going to lose money in this are the bondholders of the bank, of Silicon Bank, and the, and the stockholders. And what, essentially what they're doing is they're insuring all deposits. And the, the reason for that is because those deposits need to be used to pay for payrolls and to keep, keep businesses afloat and to keep the economy right. healthy. Right. Okay, this is a complicated situation, but I hope this uh, fills you in a little more on why it really is a different situation here. Uh, Steve, 706, over to you. Hi, thanks.